exactly. Right. So now everything's compiled. So now let's go set up our uh, dependency injection for location. So the first thing we need to do is we need to copy our platform specific code into each project. So I've expanded them there. I'm going to go just copy them over. So we have a location Android. So I'm going to just pop that in. We have an iOS version. Pop that one in. And we have a Windows Phone version. Now these are those, those are the specific implementations of that iGPS service interface, right? Exactly, exactly. Okay. So I'm going to open up the Windows Phone one. You'll see, you know, nice and neat implementation using async await. And it does exactly what we need. We get latitude longitude. We're going to go into iOS, completely different implementation. Uh, it's using CL Location Manager, which, which is the same um, classes that you're going to use in Objective-C. And you're going to go in, start updating location, task.run. We're going to run this within the task so uh, because we have to wait for events. So when location is updated, we're going to pass back that location. And even if it's failed, we, we, we need to get notified. And this is where we wait within our task. So within our task, we just do a while loop, and we do a task.delay so we don't kill the CPU at this point. Um, so we just delay, giving it a chance to find the location. And then once we get that location, we stop updating location, and then we return. OK. So obviously different than uh, Windows Phone, but we do want to implement async uh, with this because we don't want to block any UI thread or anything like that. Now we get to Android. So Android, you can see right here, you know, we got quite a bit of code to actually just get a location. So every platform is completely different uh, on how to get location. So here, we need to initialize location manager. And we do application.context.getSystemService, location service. We're going to new up a location listener. And a location listener is a custom class that we created to listen for location changes. So a lot more going on in terms of how to build or grab a location from Android from your device uh, compared to the other platforms. Uh, but essentially, this will go in. It'll grab the location, and it'll return it back to whoever's calling it using async features. So here, right here, you'll see our, our task.run, and it's going to wait until we find the location, similar to what we did on iOS. And this is where we're going to actually find the location. All right. So the result is all three of these are passing me back that lat long uh, combination yep. for our, that we put in our location. And we can then use that in our portable class library to drive the rest of our form uh, for the application. Exactly. Exactly. Now, one thing we do have to set is we have to set some, uh, some permissions. She went to the wrong one there. So we have to set some capabilities to say uh, to get location, and I'm going to set that one too. All right. So we're going into the app manifest and granting permissions to the uh, location APIs, right? Exactly. So we're going to do the same with the Android one. Let's go in here, make it a little bit easier, and. To the options, and here we're going to do course location and find location. Gotcha. Now, are we going to need to set the uh, um, app level for this one as well, like we've done in the previous modules? Uh, yes, we are. Okay. I just... Yeah, we are going to have to set that. So I'm going to just set it to 17. And while we're at it, I'm going to set the heap size to oh, 1G. Yes. Uh, if you didn't join us for module uh, 3, yep. uh, if you're building with a map, there's a tendency that we get a, a heap error uh, during the build using the maps. And so by going in and changing that Java heap size to 1 gigabyte, uh, we can get past that build error. Yeah. So now we're gonna we're gonna implement the uh, we're gonna set some things up in here. You, so we could register the classes, and what we're gonna do is we're going to do uh, 
right here. So simple IOC. This is our inversion of control that comes with MVVM Lite. And we're going to register our location service for Windows. We're going to go into iOS, into our app delegate. And we're going to register the same thing. Now, I noticed you put that in the finish launching. Why didn't we put that in the app startup? Uh, we could put it in the app startup. I, I put it in here more for preference because everything else is in here. Uh, the form's not in it. So I just put it in here. We can't put it in the app startup uh, because essentially we're just registering this okay. and not doing anything with it. And I'm going to do the same for Android. And iGPS. All right, so all we've done here is told all the different applications. When I ask for an iGPS service, where am I going to go get it, right? Exactly, exactly. So this is the, the platform-specific implementation of what we need. So now app.cs in our PCL, uh, we're going to create a view model locator. So when I copied it over, it automatically created it for me. And the view model locator uh, will allow us to pull in a view model from here. So this is where we're going to register our, our, our view models uh, everything in there, and we're going to set our default, our, our service locator, the default provider to simple IOC. So then that way, when we call a, so we get a view model, it will automatically inject the uh, location service for us, and I'll show you the view models in here. So we have a main view model, and if you notice the constructor, iGPS and we have a heritage property service. So the heritage property service, we're actually registering right here because that we could do from the PCL. So it will automatically inject that into the PCL or into the view model for us uh, when we ask a, res a reference for it. So back into the, into the view model, we have a bunch of uh, uh, properties that we have. So we have an observable collection for heritage properties. Uh, we store our GPS service and our heritage property service. Uh, we have commands uh, that we call. So the commands are called so we could run some functionality. So for example, here we want to load heritage properties. And then we do the same thing that we did in the past, except now it's contained within the view models. And then once we return, we update heritage properties. Current location, we have a command in here also. And this is where we go and grab the current location depending on the platform we're on. So from there, we have a few other things. Uh, property selected command, so we could set the, uh, the, uh, the current item selected in the details view model. And if we go into the details view model, this is where we have our heritage property, the selected item, so the details view actually knows what to, what to show. So with that, we're going to go into main page and we're going to implement something to actually call everything. So we're going to replace this and we're going to replace it with right here. So in our constructor, we're going to execute the current location command. And here we have a property that we added called view model. And what it does is goes into the app locator .get view model. If it was never created, it's going to use reflection internally to actually create that view model and then do uh, dependency injection to uh, give us a GPS and to give us the, uh, the services, the heritage property services to load everything. All right. So and this is, this is all common code in our portable class library, right? Yes. This is all in the portable class library. I'm going to set a breakpoint in current location. And I am going to run this and so this is going to run this on the Windows device. Yeah, it's going to run it on Windows. So you can see the test came up. The current location. It's giving us that as our, our location, which I think is out here um, on the Microsoft campus. And then so we know we're getting location on Windows. So we know that code is working. 
So if we go in and we set the, uh, we'll set Android and we'll set it to mixed platforms and we'll make sure it's going to the Nexus connected. And so we're going to lo we're loading this up. We're just checking to make sure that the location code is uh, doing the proper dependency injection to get the location uh, before we go into actually building out our map. Right? Exactly, exactly. So here it's starting to upload. And we should get a location value here. And here is our location on the Android All right. at this point. So, and here you see the Android version running with just a, a test content uh, label that we've added right here, a content page. So essentially that is how uh, you set up dependency injection within your application. So with that all in place, let's go in now and set up our list view. We're going to set up a list view. Uh, we're going to navigate to a details page all within our portable class library and give that same functionality that we had in the past, but essentially add no code to the native projects. Uh, okay. We're going to do it all in the portable class library. Right. And so right now, the only application or, or platform specific code is that GPS location. That's the only thing that we've written three different implementations for. But what we're about to do is create an implementation of the list and the map view Exactly. For the device, okay. Exactly, so only one standard implementation and uh, uh, for in the PCL, so we have one UI within all of it. So now we're gonna create our list view and we're gonna open up main page and we're going to set this to this code snippet. And we're gonna create a list view that we have in here. Here you'll see we'll have a property changed and we're gonna wire up the property change for the view model. Right now it's empty, but we're gonna use it in the, in the future. And we're gonna create a content page. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the binding context. So here's where our data binding comes in. Uh, we're gonna set the title to Oakville Heritage Properties. And we're gonna create a new list. So the list is gonna be created and we're gonna set some, uh, the item template to a text cell. We're gonna set some data binding to the list. So when the heritage properties uh, property within our view model gets set, it will bind it to the list and show the data automatically. So whereas before we had a load data uh, method and reload the list, this is gonna automatically do it for us. And then the item template, we wanna set some binding there because we wanna show the name and we wanna show the ID. Then we're gonna create a, uh, a stack layout. We're gonna add the, uh, the list as one of the children. And then we're gonna set the page content to the stack and we're gonna push the page into the system. So we push it in because we're using a navigation page. So in this, the navigation page is how we're gonna go from list to the, uh, the details page. All right. So we could run this and where are we? I'm going to switch back to Windows. All right, so we're loading this up. We're loading the data. I'm going to get and, rid of this uh, breakpoint. There's all of our... There's all our data that we have here. And currently we have no event handlers, but we do have a bunch of data. All right. So fairly quickly, you know, we could get that up and running. Let me stop that. And now we're gonna to navigate to the details page uh, to give the same functionality that we had before. So I'm gonna open up uh, right within our main view model. And I'm gonna change the constructor right here. And we're gonna add a new dependency, uh, a new parameter to be passed into the constructor. So the constructor is gonna have a iGPS, and it's gonna have heritage properties, and it's gonna have an iNavigation object. iNavigation is strictly from Xamarin Forms and basically abstracts how you navigate uh, within your application 
uh, and on different platforms. So it handles all that for you. And we're going to save that navigation property locally here so we could actually use it within our application, okay. uh, within our view model. So we can navigate from page to page. So, th so that's going to take care of handling the, the menu at the top on the iOS for, for clicking the back button, as well as on the Android and the I or Android and Windows Phone that have a hardware back button. It's going to handle doing all that stuff for us. Yeah, so what, what it'll do is actually the navigation page handles uh, the back button on iOS. This will allow us to push a, uh, a new page into the navigation stack. Okay. Because navigation is different on all the different platforms, uh, but this will just it, it abstracts it so we could push a, a a new page into the stack and navigate back and forth, and then all the buttons that come up into the navigation controller or into the navigation pages are the standard controls that come up on the different platforms. Right. Okay. Uh, whether it's uh, you know software based or hardware based buttons, so so now here at the end. Of this, we're going to add a property. For a heritage property item selected, and here is where we're going to actually push the detail.